there you can see Haley Esparza and Katie O'Neill walking out. They gave a little fist bump. They're getting ready to pump up the crowd. They are SpaceX employees that really are the key liaison for SpaceX with all of the things that astronauts do. So two incredible women that we know very, very well in the astronaut office that uh, are really essential to all of the SpaceX operations. And we are getting close, less than 90 seconds before a walkout. Officially happens at T minus three hours and 20 minutes. So among the crowd, you, we mentioned some of the VIPs earlier, and then we have you know a few loved ones there as well to see the crew off. So that last moment to wave uh, to your spouse, to your kids, to whomever you have there supporting with you, um, and uh, another special moment right before you get into those vehicles and make your way to the launch pad. And here they come, Crew 10 taking their first steps outside as they prepare for their journey to the International Space Station. From left to right, Kirill Peskov, Nicole Ayers, Anne McLean, and Takuya Onishi. Well, this is the second time they've done this, so when you do something a second time, does it have the same feeling? Yeah, you know, I think it's actually probably a little bit better for them because some of those nerves are gone. They've kind of gone through it already the first time. And so I think they're probably a little bit more relaxed, but still feeling all of that excitement and exhilaration for launch day. So I'd say it's probably the best of all worlds to, you know, really combine those things. You know, once you've been through something before, you have a little bit less anxiety about it, right? Like you know what to expect and it just makes you a little bit more calm and at ease. So my guess is that's what they're feeling today. Well, a relaxed crew is the kind of crew you want to have on launch day. Absolutely. You can see the big smiles on all of their faces as they're looking out toward their loved ones, their families, friends, colleagues. I imagine the the conversation is a little different than it was on Wednesday, right? Because you said your you know your favorite goodbye words, and now goodbye again. Yeah. <laughs> there's Yeah, so you, you probably had a pretty good view of the crew there when they came out. And I don't know if you noticed the height distinction between the crew. But, mm. you know, Anne McLean is actually certainly not a short woman. She's taller than an average female. I think she's 5'7", maybe a little bit more than that. But in her crew, she's actually the short one. If you noticed, her crew is exceptionally tall. So they actually made an unofficial logo, which I love. And it has all the three crew members as giraffes and <laughs> the fourth crew member of Anne as the panda on the crew. Here's a picture of that shirt actually modeled by my husband. <laughs> and with your daughter watching yes, and observing. Yes, she was observing. I think Sweet her favorite's girl. the panda as well because uh -huh. that's a, a childhood favorite of mine. Perfect for my classmate, Anne. Oh, there it is. The four crew members and Anne there, the panda, with her call sign, Animal. Anne Immel. Yeah, that call sign was bestowed on her from her old rugby team, the Atlanta Harlequins. She played with them when she was in flight school. Doors are closing. Getting ready to blast their playlists, I assume. It's one of the cool aspects. I remember when I was the astronaut support person actually riding in the car with the crew back on Crew 2. Get to participate in that. They're blasting their personally designed playlists with some, you know, real pump up music for them. The lights are blaring on the escort cars and it's a it's a really exhilarating time. Did you rock out? Oh yeah, certainly. Got to get pumped up. That launch was actually at night, which I think allows you to get even more pumped up with the lights and the music in the darkness, but beautiful weather day for what we're doing today. Can't complain. You know, speaking of the weather, Daryl, I'm glad we have such a sunny day because on that walkout, not sure if you knew about this, but Nicole Ayers, call sign Vapor, she is actually very anti-umbrella, stemming Ooh. back to her days in the Air Force. It's a, I guess it's an Air, Air, an Air Force 
flight, uh, an Air Force jet pilot thing where they're too tough for umbrellas. So they have to really stick it out no matter what the conditions are. And apparently Vapor is very religious about this. Even, you know, no matter what, when, where she is, even if she's off duty, she will not use an umbrella. Some people say that this is also carries over to all the military branches. Uh -huh. But I talked to some Navy pilots last night and they say, no way, like certainly not. They, they use umbrellas. And even Anne told me today that she wasn't even aware at all about this thing about umbrellas. So, you know, I think it's really mm. just vapor, at least on this crew, and uh, definitely an, in, an Air Force thing. Which is interesting because the, the closeout technicians have umbrellas with them when there is a little bit of rain or mist in the air. Right. And so they and their job is to immediately cover and keep those suits dry. So I I would be curious to see what Nicole yeah, would do. Yeah, you got to protect that suit. Yeah. And that's exactly what I mean. It's a good thing we have no rain today because I don't know what Vapor would have yeah. done. <laughs> right, right. Well, this was a nice moment here where the family and loved ones got to come up close to the open window of the vehicles uh, as they are just minutes away from leaving and departing the ONC. In the first vehicle, you've got the closeout lead and two suit technicians. In the second one, the commander and pilot, along with a flight surgeon. And in the third, the two mission specialists. They're getting a wave out the window as they drive off. Here they go. Core on countdown. Crew have left the ONC on the way to the pad. We're on schedule. And we are off. The crew on their way to Space Launch Pad 39A. Driving away from the Neil A. Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building, this begins the 20-minute drive with a full security escort across NASA's Kennedy Space Center, including they'll get ready to do a drive-by the VAB, as we all know. You know, I think once we see them get going on the other road here, they're going to get up to like 65 miles per hour or so, which I think they're they're oh. cruising along mm -hmm. and in pretty close proximity of each other. That's more than the posted speed limit. I just want to let you know. <laughs> Special day. Absolutely. I know we, we don't really speed when we drive here at KSC, right? You're too <laughs> no, afraid of getting to pulled that. over, but this is a special You'll day for You'll see that guy it. on your tail. I'm yeah. sure Anne loves the helicopter escort as well. You know, she's a helicopter pilot, so sweet sounds of home. And as they get up to speed here, I bet she's really jamming out. You know, Anne's mom told me that back in high school, Anne accumulated so many speeding tickets that she almost had to do some defensive driving courses. <laughs> so she has a need for speed. Oh, spilling the tea on the commander. <laughs> I like it. Speaking of Anne... Let's find out more about her in her own words. Here now, Commander Ann McLean. When I get asked why